Tammy, welcome to the Lessons of the Last Manure Show. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, let's start off with sharing a little bit about you, where you're at, where you're located, a little bit about your business. Okay, so my name is Demi. I have been an esthetician since 2013. Uh, I currently live in Denver, Colorado, and I own two lash studios, one in Centennial and one in Littleton. And um, I currently have about 20 employees across the board and um, we're open every day, Monday through Sunday. Uh, not only do we do lash extensions, we also do lash lifts, brow lamination, brow tinting, and um, permanent makeup as well. Love, love, love it. Yes, girl. Um, and oh, by the way, Demi just had a baby. What, yes. a year ago? <laughs> is she a year now? Uh, seven months ago. Seven months, seven months. So she is actively figuring out that <laughs> mompreneur life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's let's start this conversation. Can you share with me kind of what your journey was before joining the mastermind? Um, and let's just start there. Like, what, what was it you were facing that you were like, man, I really need to get some support with this? Yeah, absolutely. So before I joined the mastermind, um, I thought I was in a good place in my business. Um, I would make a lot of my decisions based off what I saw others doing on social media or just based from like previous job experiences as I've never had any experience managing a business. Um, I have experienced a lot of growth. So I feel like my team did grow at a faster rate than I expected. And I felt like I just didn't know how to keep up. Um, with the fast growth came a lot of emotionally fueled decisions that mm -hmm. I made without really um, having any evidence or data um, supporting me to make those decisions. So I feel like by joining the Momentum Mastermind, it definitely helped me, um, you know, kind of process everything that was happening and make decisions more so from a data viewpoint versus me acting emotionally upon it. Yeah. What were some of like the biggest uh hurdles or frustrations you were having, you know, last year? Um, so a huge hurdle was definitely after I gave birth, um, because not only do I now have to manage my two businesses, I have to manage a little human. So, um, just adding that into the mix was a really huge hurdle for me to overcome. Uh, not only that, but, um, I want to say two or three months after I had the baby, I had three employees walk out on me. So, um, not only was I, you know, juggling being a new mom, now I, you know, kind of was in panic mode before joining the program, um, and trying to pick up the slack at the studio, um, regarding that situation. Yeah. Do you want to share kind of a little bit around just the context of what that situation was where they walked out? Because it really put you in, in a tight spot. Yeah, totally. So um, basically what happened was one day the humidifiers weren't working and um, I was actually driving my parents to the airport that day with the baby. So I was not able to be reached. Um, I didn't have much flexibility in what I could do. Um, so my best advice to the team members who were, you know, ob obviously upset that the equipment wasn't working was to kind of troubleshoot the scenario, um, nano mist, use a different glue. Um, that sort of thing to which they, you know, wanted a response or a solution right then and there. Um, you know, I explained I wasn't available and this is the best that I could do. Um, they wanted to move their clients to the next day, but, you know, I basically told them that nothing was going to change tomorrow because I was still unavailable. Um, and they walked out. Uh, we have had previous issues with these specific employees before. Uh, so I just felt like it was a ticking time bomb, so to speak. But, um, you know, knowing what I know now, um, I probably would have reacted differently um, because at the time I was just sent into panic mode. Um, being three months postpartum after having a C-section, I ended up going to the studio the next day to take clients. Um, yeah. That was really hard on me mentally and physically. But, um, you know, I am thankful for the knowledge that I have gained from the program. And I know that if I ever find myself in a similar situation, I will know how to handle it better. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how your perspective on that, those hiccups that come up and the team management challenges, how would Demi now handle that differently to maybe get a different result? Yeah, totally. So, um, with the program, I have learned how to hire people who align with my mission, vision, vision and values. Um, so I truly believe that the team that I have now wouldn't even put me in a situation yes. like that. Um, so yeah, I'm 
not even worried about it. I know it's not going to happen again. So that's number one. Uh, number two, even if it did happen again, um, you know, everything happens. Um, what is it for you, not to you? Yes. Um, so we'll, we'll find a solution. Uh, there's no reason to panic. Um, yeah, there's no reason to panic. Uh, we will figure out a solution. So um, there's no point in me being stressed out over something I can't fix right away. Yeah, it's really focusing on what is the problem that needs to be solved. And so we always look at, and I think this is something that we really harp on in this program is you are the cause of all the results in your business, right? And so when we look at like, well, but the team members walked out, how was I the cause of that? Well, who hired the team members, right? And so even not having context of there should be a process in place to get the right team members in, much less than onboard them, much less how do we communicate? How do we troubleshoot to where it's not one bad day with a humidifier, which is just, it just tends to happen, right? Sometimes yeah. things break, sometimes things don't work um, for that to lead to three people walking out, which also talks about the culture that there was three people, not just one bad team member, or I don't know if bad is the right word to use, but one team member that has issues, it's now three. Cause that's a major, that's a major drop in, in employees. And so I think when we look at creating a process dependent business instead of a people dependent business, that's kind of what gives you that safety net to fall back on is like, okay, we have a problem. Let's review the process. Can we turn the process on to get new team members on where all of a sudden it's not like, no, what do we do? It gives you a place to go to problem solve and troubleshoot to then have a plan in place. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Um, Share with me kind of some successes or wins or transformations that you've experienced over the last few months being a part of this program. What's been some of the the more eye-opening things or things that have just like, wow, this has made a major difference? Uh, so two things come to mind when you say that. Uh, number one is how I react to things now, not only in my professional life, but in my personal life. Um, I feel like now I'm definitely taking a step back and analyzing the situation a lot more than just like emotionally responding and just freaking out right away. Um, so I've definitely learned how to take a breath and, um, you know, just take everything piece by piece and go through the situation as small as a piece as I need to go through it. Um, the second most significant thing I feel like I've taken from the program, I just want to go back to team building. Um, it makes such a huge difference when you are around the people who are meant to be on your team, um, especially um, me a year ago compared to me right now. Um, you know, I feel like for the most part, give or take a few people, I do have a completely different team, but the environment, the team culture, um, the vibe in my studio, it's just so much more positive now. And it's just so much more of a pleasant place to be. And I truly feel like it's because I have completely changed the way I onboard my team members. I have completely changed the way I interview them and vet them in the beginning. And I feel like overall um, productivity is up. Um, everyone loves coming to work and it's just a happier place for us and the clients. So um, it's made a world of difference at both of my studios. Oh my gosh. And in such a short time, right? Cause yeah, it was, uh, I think we had your interview in December and it's mm -hmm. now May at the time of the recording early May. And it's just such a difference maker on just those little tweaks and the processes and being intentional about what you're creating. Cause you know, I, I know you don't have the, the 30,000 foot view of this quite yet, but having run people through this program several times, I can now see a year from now is going to be a completely different business. It's just going to keep scaling, growing. That doesn't mean you're not going to face more problems, but now you have the tools and the understanding of how do I approach these problems? How do I look at where I want to be and work backwards from there? Kind of talk to me about some of your, your favorite parts of the, the mastermind, whether it's the community, the retreats, the coaching calls, what's been, what's been kind of the, the unexpected surprise or bonus or benefit to joining the program like this? Um, it's really hard to say, like, I've enjoyed every single aspect of the program. Uh, I think number one, especially for six months ago, me, um, you know, I'm like anxiety ridden. Uh, the best thing starting right off the bat was the support system, uh, the, the group, um, you know, I could run to you guys, you know, via Voxer and be like, oh my God, I need help with this, this and this. And not only you would provide different perspectives of the scenario, everyone else would give in their feedback. So it definitely opened up my eyes to a lot of different um, like paths I could take to solve my problems. So having a support system full of women who are, you know, leaders was definitely very helpful in the beginning. 
um, the retreats. Oh my God, they were so much fun. Um, it was just so cool meeting everyone in person and being able to connect with everyone. Um, so that was a really great part of it too. Yeah. And I love that you got to bring the baby and mom along too. Yeah. That was awesome. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, let's kind of wrap this up. If you, let's say um, Demi today is giving advice to Demi from six months a year ago. And what could you say to her that would inspire her or motivate her that getting support in a program like this um, really is going to benefit her? Uh, First things first, it is not happening to you. It's happening for you. I think that has I have repeated that to myself so many times in the past couple of months. Um, and it is true, you know, um, if it happens to you once, uh, you're gonna know how to handle the situation next time moving forward. Um, but, you know, it is just so nice to know that you're not the only one who deals with the, these problems. Cause sometimes, I mean, before I'd be like, oh my gosh, do, do other people d- deal with this? Like do other business owners have to deal with the same things I am dealing with today? And um, yeah, it's true people, there are people out there going through the same battles and struggles that you are going through. And it's always going to be okay in the end. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, oh, I did want to ask, uh, yeah. so kind of tell me about your team mix. Cause you have two locations, you have a very yeah. large business, right? And I think that's really inspiring and like giving people hope of like, wow, that's possible. So kind of talk to me about how many lash artists you have receptionists, like how, how is the team made up? Yeah, so um, at my Centennial location, it's I think now it's about split half and half. Um, I have one new artist training at my Centennial location currently, and I think three at the Littleton location. Um, so we have Monica, who is amazing. Um, she helps me with operations and just like client satisfaction. So mm. Monica and myself actually go back and forth from the locations um, just to make sure everything you know is going smoothly. Um, my receptionists are in charge of not only checking clients in and out, but just making sure everyone's happy, like, you know, leaving in and out. Um, if they notice someone is unhappy, you know, I'm like, even if you're not sure and you, you're just kind of on the fence, let me or Monica know. Um, we always like to reach out to customers and be like, hey, was there anything else we can make uh, or we could do to make your experience better? Please let us know. So um, customer service side, um, the receptionists do an amazing job, but the lash artists do an amazing, amazing job as well. Um, you know, I tell everyone when clients walk into our studio, just make them feel like family, you know, treat everyone how you want to be treated when you go somewhere. And I think that simple statement has led to such a quick growth in my business because we have a lot of reoccurring uh, clients coming back. Love that. That's such a good sign of like yeah. success when you have recurring customers. So then you don't have to get new customers as often because you've got the repeat ones. How many, if you had to guess, or if you know the number, like how many clients do the two locations see a week combined or a month? Um, I'm going to go based off how many gel pads I have to order. Um, so I think <laughs> that I'm works. Ordering a- I think I'm ordering like almost 400 gel pads every two to three weeks. Wow. So yeah, we, uh, we do see a lot of people. Um, It's almost like 800 appointments a month. Total. Yeah. Yeah. We do see a lot of people. Um, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing yeah, no, I love that I love it I love it awesome well Debbie thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey I know you've got baby in the back so I, I don't want to tempt fate and have her start kicking off totally fine. um but I valued and and so enjoyed because because there's a lot more stuff that's gone on with Demi that we're just not not going to talk about. But it's really it's it's how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I can see how she showed up differently for her business and how she showed up in her life, how she showed up as a mom. Um it really has been a beautiful journey to watch you evolve as a woman and into a leader. And I'm 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 getting emotional about it. So I'm gonna keep this short. But you have shown so much. You are you are so inspiring. And I know that there's so much more ahead from you as soon as you you're, you're getting through some really tough stuff personally, and it's just going to make you a better mom and it's going to make you a better leader. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so honored to have been a part of your journey and I'm always here for you. And we're going to, we're going to kick butt and take lash out to the next level. All right. Well, thank you so much. If you guys are interested in applying for momentum mastermind season four applications open May 30th through June 9th. Otherwise you can shoot me a DM on Instagram. See if the program's the right fit for you. Talk to me about your business and team building goals at the Lashpreneur. Send me a DM. Otherwise, Demi, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.